Thank you very much and welcome to today's class. Uh, today, I want us to look at uh, correlations. For, uh, initially, we had looked on how we can analyze categorical variables. But today, I want us to look at how you can analyze continuous variables or discrete variables. And uh, when you're analyzing continuous or discrete variables, uh, you want to know whether they are related linearly. Uh, you use a method of um, analyzing them or a statistics we call correlation in order for you to know how they are linearly correlated. Um, As you aware that in education research, many situations in your arrives that involve two or more variables. Now, in case there's a change in one variable, which appears to be accompanied by a change in another variable, the two variables are said to be correlated. And this interdependency is what we are calling correlation. There are many types of correlation, but today I want to introduce linear correlation or partial correlation or multiple correlation. But today I want us to confine ourselves to linear correlation, the relationship between two variables that can be represented graphically by a straight line. And this straight line is uh, in sort of a linear uh, when you draw it on the graph. If there is an increase in a variable, which leads to an increase in another variable, this is known as positive correlation. If we have uh, one variable and this variable, when it increases, it leads to an increase to another variable. This is known as positive correlation. And uh, we can show the positive correlation we, when, we are, when we are representing graphically with the graph I'm going to show you in, the, in a short while. Now, in this case, I'm going to give an example of a positive correlation. Now, when we talk of a positive correlation, the, take, for example, the age of a, a, a child. Now, when the age of a child increases, the weight of the child also increases. Now, here we say that the height, uh, the age and the height are positively correlated. Now, when we are re representing this one graphically, you can have the age of the child. So you can have the age, the age of the child on this end, and you have uh, the age in months or in years. So let's say this one is years. And this is the weight. Now, when the age increases, so you have, let me say, three years. And this child is, let me say, 10. Ah uh, no no not not ten because it must be correlated it's supposed to be about uh this weight uh taken in grams or in pounds so the child age increases so when you get to seven years you look the child is above ten is above ten this one is just theoretic uh, theoretically 
It's not the real situation found on the ground. I just am uh, just using this one to represent some facts that when the age of the child goes up, also the weight of that child also increases. And we are saying that this one is an example of a positive correlation. Also, uh, we can have a situation whereby we are having a positive correlation like this one. The age is increasing from a given point, but when it gets a point, it gets to a point like uh, there are some situation when you get to a point, there's something that stops and you have constant. And instead, it starts coming down. This kind of uh, a graph is called curvilinear. This kind of a graph is called curvilinear. Also, at some point, you can see there is an increase that corresponds on, the, on both axes. There is an increase that corresponds on both axes, but it, it reaches somewhere and it becomes flat. The, the, that increase stops uh, from both, from both, from both uh, axes. It stops on that end and also on this end, it stops. So as such, uh, and it started declining. So it was rising and it gets to a place where you get it, oh, like you have seen in the graph, and it starts climbing. This one is called a curve linear. Now, the situation where there is a decrease in one variable, and this decrease leads in, in the degrees of another variable. This is called negative correlation. For example, uh, Intelligence in children. They take lesser time in solving a problem. Now, here, intelligence and time have a negative correlation. For example, when you are drawing a negative correlation, you realize that this correlation, they drop on the graph. They drop on the graph. So as the child grows, so this is, um, we say that this one is intelligent quotient, and uh, 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 we are measuring the intelligence quotient by uh, giving some max of this child. So we see that when this child is two years, or this is the age, And this is a, um, so we see that when this child is growing up, there is, the, uh, this graph is actually representing um, some sort of, when this variable, uh, when this variable decreases like this one here, when this variable decreases, like we have 40 there, it's four. And when you decrease to 20, like what we have here, you go. So when this one is decreasing from 40 to 20, this one has increased from four to 10. So this kind of relationship is called negative correlation. Also, there is a curvilinear for this kind of negative correlation, like the one I'm representing here. Uh, also, there is another correlation where there is no movement at all in either the, 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 the two variables that you are dealing with. They don't relate at all at all. So the, if there exists no relationship between two variables, then this kind of correlation is called zero correlation. There is no correlation at all. When one variable increases, the other one might not increase or there is no change in any variable. So this kind of change in variables, we call it zero correlation. Uh, and in the, in the graphical representation of zero correlation, it's like in, in this graph I'm having on my screen, you see, 
even if you try to get any kind of correlation between these points on the on this axis, this what I'll call a y axis, and these points here on the x axis, you realize that you can't get any point because they are scattered all through the graph. They are not forming any pattern here, but the pattern is scattered all through. So this one is called zero correlation. That's the pattern that is presented here on our screen. Also, I think we have finished or now on the patterns and the correlations, but I want us now to see how we can be able to calculate calculations or how we can be, what statistic we use in order for us to calculate correlations. Now, coefficient of correlation is a statistical measure of degree in which changes to the value of one variable predict the change to another variable. But I should be able to say that when I talk of change, when I talk of change, this word change, I'm not talking about causation. That this variable is not actually the, the causation of the other variable. Because there might be so many other things that are causing this variable to change or to, 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 to behave in such a way. So when we talk about the changes in one variable, we are not talking about the causation. That we conclude that this variable is the cause of the change. We're supposed to also put in mind that there are also other underlying factors that cause change. And a change in one variable is not actually the position that it, the, the, which makes that this variable is changing because this variable has been changed. Now, the value of coefficient of correlation ranges from positive one to negative one. So when you are, you, you are calculating a value of a coefficient of correlation, if you get anything beyond positive one, like say that you got 1.1 1 .1 or you got 1.2, know that that one is a wrong value because our values of correlation range from positive one to negative one. And when this value coefficient is closer to positive one, when this value of coefficient you calculate it is closer to positive one, then the two variables are said to be having a strong positive correlation. I'll repeat that one again. When you calculate the value of correlation, that's the coefficient of correlation, and you get that that value is closer to positive one or positive one or closer to positive one, then we say that two variables are, have a very strong positive correlation. And also, when the value is closer to negative one, then we say that they have a strong negative correlation. So when I talk of closer to negative one, let me say it is zero, negative 0 0.9, negative 0 0.8, negative 0 0.7. So when you come to this direction up to negative 1.0, then we say that this one is a strong negative correlation. But when we get a correlation that is a positive 1.0, ah, uh, positive 0 0.9, positive 0 0.8, then we are saying that this one is a strong positive correlation. And if the value that you calculated the coefficient of correlation is zero, then the two variables have zero correlation. Now, what are some of the examples of correlations that we have? You can have a such question that you will ask. Do female students do better than male students in art subjects in second schools? These are two variables, female and 
male. And you can calculate the coefficient of correlation on the two to see whether we can be able to justify this assertion that female students do better in, math, uh, in art subjects than male counterparts. Also, you can also look at educational achievement of a primary school child who enjoys parental help in doing their homework and to that child who doesn't have parental uh, help in doing their homework. And you correlate between the two and be able to see whether there is a correlation or between the child who receives parental help and the child who doesn't receive parental help in doing their homework. So if you get the correlation coefficient closer to positive one, then you, 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 you will say that there is a correlation and there's a positive correlation. And also you can look at it and you say whether there's a negative correlation or not. Also aptitude tests in mathematics. You can, can they be used to predict success in an algebraic course? So you can look at this to see whether there's a correlation between the two. The mathematical attitude test and the algebraic course a students right. want to enroll in. You can uh, be able to relate the two. Or is there any correlation between mathematics and science course? Or is there any correlation between statistics, uh, a course in statistics in university and a course in research? Is there a, any correlation? You can calculate the two, and when you get a coefficient, you can be able to draw your conclusion. I've also said that it's important to point out that association between two variables or more variables that do not necessarily imply one of the variable causes the other. This causation. Uh, that's what I've been trying to say in my previous slide, that you're supposed always to know that the two variables might be related in a way, but that does not imply association. Now, correlation implies prediction, but not causation. Intervening in variables may account for the causation, and this is a fact the distinctive characteristics and the strength of experimental paradigm. So you must be always be aware of that. When two variables are correlated, you can use the relationship to predict the value on the other variable if you know what subject value on the other variable. Variables that are highly correlated may suggest the positive existence of causation by experimental studies to determine if the relationships are casual or not. For computing the coefficients of linear correlation, we generally use two methods. One is rank difference method, raw, and the other one is product moment method, represented by R. These are the two methods we use in calculating the correlation coefficient. And whenever we get this correlation coefficient, we can use them in predicting. So these are the statistics, the two statistics we use in, uh, in research to either reject our null hypothesis or accept the null hypothesis. Also, there are others we can use calculate in calculating the coefficient of correlation, and these include by a point by serial, the by serial, the phi or the fourfold correlation, tetrachronic. And uh, remember, I've already dealt with, in this class, I've already dealt with pi and Kendall tau correlation coefficient. So these are 
uh, the other we can use in looking at coefficients, correlation, uh, co correlation coefficients. And I will uh, encourage you to read more about these ones. Read about the point pi serial, pi serial, phi, and Kendall Tau correlations so that you can have more knowledge about how you calculate their um, how you calculate their coefficients and also how you generate these coefficients because they are sometimes generated from uh, statistical packages like uh, statistical packages for social sciences SPSS and also some softwares in uh, compute compute computing the computers can also generate some of these uh, when uh, the data is entered correctly uh, they can generate these uh, coefficients now in choosing an appropriate co correlation coefficient you will need to consider the nature of the variable or the data you are using in this case you will need to consider whether they are continuous or discrete you also need to consider the subsequent analysis to which the coefficient will be sub will be subjected to. So let us start with the first one, rank difference correlation method. I'm going to show you how you use rank difference correlation method in calculating the correlation coefficient. Uh, in research, we have many possible situations. And these situations uh, we have the data and this data we have is continuous data, but when you look at it, you need to rank it first before you can calculate. You don't just use it direct the way you get it. You need to rank it first before you are able to calculate the correlation coefficient. There might be outliers in the data. And if you use it, you use another method of correlation, you will not get the good results or the correlation coefficient will not be good. Or the data might be following the Kavlinia Kavlinia but pattern, because I showed you at the beginning of this uh, lecture what a Kavlinia pattern is. And as such, you might not be able to get a straight linear relationship. So in such a case, you will be able to use rank different correlation method to calculate your coefficient and be able now to see whether there is a, a, a relationship between the two variables that you are dealing with. And this type of coefficient or correlation is known as rank correlation coefficient. And also, it's known as Spearman coefficient of correlation. It's also known as Spearman coefficient of correlation. The formula for getting the Spearman, Spearman coefficient of correlation is given as R H O pronounced as rho equals to one minus six summation of b squared all over the number of items n open bracket n squared minus one close the bracket. So this is the formula we use. And you look at my screen. I have displayed the formula. You look at my screen, been able to write to, to give the formula here, which is and let me now proceed to show you how we use this formula in calculating the rank difference correlation or Spearman correlation coefficient. I have two students, or not two students, one student. And um, I have several. Students here, students A, B, C, B, E, F, G, H, I, J. Those are the labels I've given to my students. 
And I have their marks in science and also their marks in mathematics. And I want to see whether mathematics and science are related in a way or they are correlated in a way. So I'll move on to calculate the Spearman correlation coefficient so that I'll able to now to see where there is a relationship between science and mathematics. And this is how I will proceed. I will invert this table so that I can have the max in this way as presented on my screen. So that I am not having them on the rowways, but I'm having columns. And this way, I will now start ranking these students in science subjects. I look, the highest mark in, uh, in, in science is eight. So this one will take rank one. 62, 65 is uh, the marks that follow, then it will take rank two. 62 will take rank three. 52 will take rank four. 50 will take rank five. 48 will take rank six. 45 will take rank seven. 40 will take rank eight. 38 will take rank nine. And then finally, 35 will take rank 10. I also move to mathematics and rank the schools accordingly. So the highest score in mathematics is 72. It will take rank one. 70 will take rank two. 69 will take rank three. 65 will take rank four. 60 will take rank five. 59 will take rank three, uh, rank six. 58 rank seven. 55, rank 8. 45, uh, 48, rank 9. And 45, rank 10. So after you have ranked, like what you are seeing in this ranking, I've done my ranking. Now, I will take my rank now is what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use the raw max, this is, is not used. The raw max are not used. So in the next step, I'll take my rank now and like rank in mathematics, I'll do this rank X and rank Y is rank in, uh, rank in science is rank X and rank in mathematics rank Y. Then I'll take the difference between the two ranks. So five minus six is negative one. And that's what I'm calling D, D. So D is rank X minus rank Y. Two minus one is one. 10 minus 10 is zero. Eight minus seven is one. Seven minus eight, you are subtracting the ranks up to the last one. Then after you have the difference of the ranks, now you square. Have you got the difference in ranks? You now square, like here we square one and we get one. We square again, one here and we get one. Zero, we get zero. One, we get one there. We are squaring the D or we are squaring. Then after you have finished squaring, all the Ds, the differences, 
then get the summation. So in this case, our summation is equals to 10. Our summation equals to 10. Then you'll take this 10 now to our formula. Remember, our formula is one minus six summation of b squared all over n bracket n squared minus one. So remember, there are 10 students. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 10 students. So that represents our n. Now, when you now substitute the formula, you know this first 10 is our summation of B. And this N here is the number of students. This N here also is the number of students, but this one we are squaring. Now, the coefficient of correlation or the Spearman coefficient of correlation will be one over 60 over 990. And when you calculate, you will get it 0 0.94. Which means the achievement of students in science is highly correlated with that one in mathematics. Now, Superman rank correlation coefficient, we look for if we want out to, if we have um, if we have a null hypothesis, and a null hypothesis in this case will say. There is no relationship between a performance in sciences and mathematics. So we want to see whether we are going to reject these null hypothesis. Then we move on to get the statistics from the table. Then we have to calculate the degree of freedom and the degree of freedom for Spearman rank correlation is given by n minus 2. n, the number of uh, samples, minus 2. In this case, there were 10. So it will be 10 minus 2. So the degree of freedom in this case will be 8. Then. Once we have it, then we will look in the table of critical values for Spearman correlation coefficient at the desired significance level. And in this case, we usually use 0 0.05. So in that table, uh, on one end is the degree of freedom. And on the other end, we have the, we have the, significance level, which is 0 0.05. So what you'll do, you will go down to eight. Eight will be somewhere there. These are the number of the degree of freedom. Then you go to where we have our 0 0.5 and check that value. So when you check the value, where the two are intersecting. This value will be the critical will be the critical value. And now you be able to compare the critical value and the calculated value. In this case, I told you the other day, if you are having, this is a normal curve, and uh, I mean here is zero, and you get your, this is the calculated value, and this is the critical value, then this one is falling in the area of acceptance of our null hypothesis. If our calculated value 
our critical value was on the other end. Then it will be falling in the area of rejection of our null hypothesis. This is a one tail analysis, but if you are doing the, the two tail analysis, you'll go also the other end. Now, the critical value helps you to determine whether the observed correlation coefficient is statistically significant or not. And if the absolute value of the calculated Spearman correlation is greater than or equal to the critical value obtained, as I said from the table, then you can conclude that there is a strictly significant correlation between the two variables. Once you have calculated the degree of freedom, I think we have come out of that. Now, once you have determined the significance of the correlation, you can interpret the magnitude and the direction. So the magnitude, I told you earlier that we have the negative and the positive. So you can either say this strongly correlated, negatively correlated or strongly positively correlated. And a positive Spearman correlation coefficient indicates a direct relationship between the two variables that you are dealing with, while a negative coefficient indicates an inverse relationship. The closer the coefficient is closer to positive one or negative one, then the stronger the correlation. Once you have determined the significance of the correlation coefficient, you can interpret the magnitude and the direction I've already said. And um, here I have another example. In this case, when I looked at um, the, um, in the tables, of which I don't have them here, you can uh, do some downloading of some of them so that you can practice. The CPMN crank correlation between mathematics and science scores for 10 paired observation was found to be 0 0.891. And this indicates a strong positive correlation between mathematics and science. The critical value for this analysis was determined to be 0 0.643 at the significance level of 0 0.05. Given that they calculated the correlation coefficient as I was drawing, let me try to draw again and try to show you that um, if you have zero here, my 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 mouse trying to bring a a a, a flat a flat um have, but uh, let us use it. Uh, the, the critical one, this critical value, you found a 0 0.643, and this is the critical value. And the calculated value, this one is at this point, and the calculated value is 0. 0.891. So you can see both of them here. This one is falling into the area where you accept your null hypothesis. If it were in this area, then we reject the null hypothesis. Then if the critical would come this direction, we reject the null hypothesis. So we say that given that they calculate the correlation coefficient of 0 0.891, exceeds the critical value of 0 0.643. The relationship between mathematics and science scores is statistically significant at p-value 0 0.05. And this is how you report your results in APA style. Because sometimes we require our students to report the, the findings in APA style. So you will say the Spearman rank correlation coefficient P between mathematics and science score for 10 paired observation was found to be 0 0.891. This indicates a strong positive correlation between mathematics science scores among the students. And the critical value for this analysis was determined to be 0 0.643 at a significance level of 0 0.05. 
given that the, the calculated correlation coefficient of a 0.891 exceeds the critical value of 0.643. The relationship between mathematics and science score is statistically significant at p equals uh, p greater than 0.05. That's how you report your results in APA style. Let me also look at the product moment method, also known as Pearson correlation coefficient. We are finished with Spearman correlation coefficient. So I want us to look at a product moment method, which is also known as Pearson correlation coefficient. And this is now a measure of linear relationship between two variables. If you have your variables and you suspect that they have a linear relationship, there's no curve linear, and these uh, scores also do not have uh, outliers, then you use product moment method to calculate the coefficient, which is also known as Pearson correlation coefficient, which you can also be able to interpret. And the formula for this method is R equals to, on the denominator, summation of the differences of, um, the differences of every item from the mean, and you'll having be having two that one of x and the difference of uh, the summation of y all over the denominator, which has the root of the summation of x minus mean squared or, or times summation of y minus the mean of y squared. In this case, let me make the life symbol here because I want us to move with a symbol life in this case. So we have values here. So I have a test. I have about uh, two, one, two, three, four, five, six students. And I want to see whether their scores are correlated in a way. So what I'll do, I'll first of all get test in X and I calculate the mean test in X. And the mean of the test in X is 20. And also I get the mean of the test in Y. And in this case, the mean of this test, when you add all these numbers, 26 plus 20 plus 24 plus 30 plus 26 plus 18, the mean will be 24. So the mean becomes very important in this case, where we are doing the product moment method, also called Pearson. Uh, correlation coefficient. Here, I will take 20 minus my mean. So 20 minus the mean, you get zero. 25, which is the raw value, minus the mean, which is 20, you get five. 15 minus the mean, which is 20, you get negative five. 22 minus the mean, which is 20, you get two. 28 minus the mean, which is 20, you get 8. And 10 minus the mean, which is 20, you get negative 10. In this case, you have to record these values. They are, I've recorded them in a column I introduced as the value of x minus the mean. There's supposed to be a bar here. Then you come to the second test, which is y. You calculate the mean, which was 24. So you take the raw value, which is 26 minus the mean, you get two. So this is the raw value of y, which I'm, I'll present with y, 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 minus the mean. The bar is supposed to be there. So you do up to the end. You do it up to the end. This is 20 minus 24, negative 4. 24 minus 5, uh, minus 24 goes to 24 minus 24 is equal to 0. 30 minus 24 is 6. 26 minus 8 equals to 2. And 18 minus 24, you get negative 6. Then when you have finished that, you proceed on. 
Because from the formula, we have this one squared. So you will square xi minus x squared. So this value here, this value you got here, you are going to square it. So this one, when you square it, you're going to get this one squared there. Please, let me do that. You are going to square this value here. This one, you square it is zero. Five squared is 25. Five, negative five squared is 25 again. Then you have two squared is four. Then you have eight squared is 64. Then you have negative 10 squared is 100. Then you have y1 and you square it. I already squared it there. So these ones are not for it. So you leave them alone. So we have y squared. This one is 4. This one is negative 16. Uh, is 16 negative 4. Squared is 16. 0. This 6. You square 36. And two, you square it is four. Then negative six square is negative that. Ah, uh, is negative six squared is that six. Then, after you have done that, you add all these values: twenty-five plus twenty-five plus four plus sixty-four plus. Uh, 100, then you have also to add this, 4 plus 16 plus 0 plus 36 plus 4 plus 36. And uh, you will get 218. So this one is 218. And this one is 96. Ninety-six there. So now you come with your values here. And also you do the summation of X. You have to your X. So this one will be X and this one will be a Y. You are X, this one will be a X and this one will be a Y. So you will have to get this value here and this value of Y here, I'm calling Y. So this value here and this value here, you multiply them and you'll get here zero. You multiply this one and this one, you get a 20. You get this one and this one here, you multiply them, you get zero also. This one and this one you multiply, you get a cut 12. Uh, you get 12, not a cut 12 because there's no category cut anywhere. This one and this one is 16. And this one and this one, when you multiply, you get positive 60. And add all of them. Add all of them. Add all of them. Giving you some time to add. See so what you. So you have realized that um, here it's eight. Two hundred and eighteen, ninety six, and sixty eight. So I want us to get this value and put it, put them in our formula. So we are having 68 here. 68 will come here at the numerator. 218 will go there. And 96 will come there. So when you have put all these values, so you are product moment correlation. 
will be 0 0.47. So this one is a weak correlation between these, is a weak correlation between these two uh, tests, test X and test Y. A weak correlation between test X and test Y. I have already talked about what I'm showing here, uh, giving the reasons why a researcher might choose to use Spearman row instead of regular correlation coefficient. And I, I said when we have calvilinear relationships, and also I said when we have uh, results that are not uh, in um, which do not follow or the original scores are not based on equal interval measurements. So they do not follow that criteria where there are equal interval measurements. And also when we have outliers in the data, we use Spearman row and all will be well. Thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, let's meet again uh, in another presentation. It's nice time having you today. Thank you.